Hey everyone, this is Simmer Erin, and this is just going to be a commentary video about three things I do not want to see in a potential Sims 5. Now, just a little bit of a disclaimer, there is no absolute confirmation that there's a Sims 5. We do know that we got news that there is a game in development for for the sims and we don't know for sure that it is literally the sims 5 but if you guys want more information about that i made a video about that and i'm sure you've probably heard about it anyway so these are going to be my own opinions they might be a little bit unpopular but i'm okay with that because it is a commentary video and honestly i've been dying to do commentary videos because i do some commentary videos with my sims 4 news and my paralyzed news but I would like to do some more commentary heavy videos. So if you have any topics where you just want to hear me rant or just kind of talk about what I think, definitely let me know. And if you ever want any videos where I ask you what you guys think, I would love to do that as well. But anyway, let's go ahead and get right into it. I have for just free things on this list and they're free bigger categories. And I think that these are things that I'm pretty sure about, things that I definitely don't want to see in a Sims 5 or any future Sims franchise games or whatever. So the first one is, at least for Sims 5, no microtransactions at all or no completely online version of the game. So I lumped these two together. So there were some rumors that the next game is going to have some online component. In fact, it's not just rumors, it's basically the EA CEO has basically said we're going to invest in more online capabilities. And what a lot of us were worried about was if it would be an online only game. I do think that after reassessing, I think it's unlikely that it's going to be an online only game, but I'm still worried because Sims 4 was going to be an online only game and then they changed it. So I still think it's a possibility. So I don't want online only, first of all, because I think a lot of us might enjoy that, but other people want to be able to play offline. You know, sometimes we don't feel comfortable playing with people online. I also think more importantly that just the way The Sims has worked, I would worry about how expansion packs would work if it was online only. I would also worry about what degree control you have, also things and issues such as bullying, issues such as how do you deal with younger players playing with online. I just personally would be okay if there was an online component, but I hope that the focus is still on an offline mode. As far as microtransactions, I don't think I need to explain it too much. I just don't want that in a traditional Sims game. If they want to do a spin-off, like that is totally fine and people can play that, but I don't want it to be focused on microtransactions. I do really prefer the DL DLC system. So my next category is actually going to be a little bit more in depth and that is going to be a little controversial now and that's I don't want a lot of more life stages. So currently of course we have babies but we really don't have babies so I would like those to come back as real sims and we have toddlers and of course we have kids, teens, young adults, adults and elders right? And the big thing is preteens. This is a popular request, although a lot of people also don't like this idea, and I am one of them. I don't need preteens in a Sims 5. I am not going to pitch a fit if they do bring preteens, but here's why I don't want preteens. I don't want preteens that much because I see a problem where the individual life stages themselves are not developed as it is. And I feel like if you throw in one more life stage, that's going to be yet another one that could be risk being underdeveloped. I also think it's just maybe not as necessary and we could invest our resources in other things. So what we could do to make the transition from child to teen a little bit more seamless and make more sense is we could have some phases maybe in that life stage. So like for a kid, maybe towards the very end of the kid's stage, they could develop a first crush or something like that. For a very young teenager, they could go through breakouts and acne and things like that. 
And I think it would be really cool to have like mini markers throughout the bigger life stage. Again, I'm not totally against preteens. I just don't know that it would be completely necessary. It's also a very small part of your life. So if you could add some preteen-esque moments, and if you could add some things that really flesh out each life stage, I think that's more important. I think what people are upset with in The Sims 4 is that, for example, teens don't feel very different from young adults. And I think that isn't solved through more life stages, but by making sure that there's a really big investment and making each life stage feel unique, distinct, and meaningful. So to that end, I would definitely not be so stoked about preteens, but if they did come in Sims 5, I just hope they would be done well. And as far as though babies and toddlers, babies and toddlers really should come with the base game in Sims 5. I think that would be a huge misstep if they did that again. So my last category is actually going to be about ultra realism. So under ultra realism, I am putting things such as religion, politics, and mental illness, as well as some random things like fitness trackers. Let me explain. I am one of those people that is constantly advocating for realism and realistic gameplay. And I know that there are some people that are more fantastical players, and I think that's cool too. I think it's fine to have different play styles. However, as much as I like realistic touches, such as small interactions, like for example, in Sims Free, you were able to cuddle with your partner in bed. Like those little things really make it, just little details. I love that stuff. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about bigger systems. And when I talk about ultra realism, I mean things that I just don't think would flesh out well or could be represented very well in a game. As far as religion, some people are really pushing for this. I think if there is religion, it should be either a, your sim has faith or they are essentially a non-believer, they're secular. I think that possibly could be okay. You could put a tradition around it, but it would have to be a made-up religion. It would have to be very general because if you put in specific religions, I just don't think it would go well. Now, I do know I'm going to get some pushback by this because some people are going to argue we already have a religion in The Sims. And I will say, yes, we do have some representation and some hints of holidays that are celebrated by religious people. So what I mean by that is we have, for example, we basically have Christmas in The Sims, right? I will say though, Christmas, even though it is linked with Christianity technically, it is also a secular holiday. There are tons of people that don't believe in God and celebrate Christmas. So it is also the commercial manifestation. So we could get more commercial manifestations of things. I just think that actually having a religion completely represented it is a problem. And the other problem with it is I feel like it would just not be done very well. And how could you represent all religions? You couldn't. So like I said, I'm okay with nods to religions and increasing representation, but I don't think I want an actual religion system, if that makes sense. As far as politics, I think it's totally fine to have a political career. I think it's totally fine to even enhance that political career, but I don't want specific real ideologies. Now, if they went ahead and made up their own political landscape within The Sims world, it could potentially work, but you just have to be really careful, and I think some of that stuff's really tricky, and I just think it could end up really badly. And then mental illness. I've been wanting to talk about this for a while. Now, you guys may or may not know if you're new to my channel, but I have struggled with a number of mental health issues, mostly chronic depression and anxiety that I have managed, but it is worse during certain times of year. And unfortunately, I've had an eating disorder as well. So unfortunately, I have had a lot of experience with mental illness. So as far as mental illness, I just don't think it should be in a game. Let me explain. This is going to be really personal to me, and I think that people are going to have different opinions on this. I do agree that physical disabilities potentially could be represented as long as they're done well, as long as the Sims team actually has people they can go to and talk to and say, what is it like living with this physical disability? But I think even then it should be very general. Like we could add some wheelchairs, for example. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Someone mentioned hearing aids. I think that's fine too. I do worry about very specific physical disabilities. I just think that that could go wrong. 
As far as mental illness, for some people, they use The Sims as a form of escapism, and I feel like having the specific symptoms of, say, like, schizophrenia, I just don't think that would go well. And I also think that it probably would just end up not really pleasing people. It would probably offend people. It probably, we couldn't depict all mental illnesses, and I feel like it probably would just honestly get it wrong, unless they interviewed people specifically of all these mental illnesses. And even then, think about how problematic it could be, okay? So, for example, if they are showing someone who struggles with some sort of addiction, then you are showing literally triggering things in the game. I mean, again, I know some people are going to get mad with this and say, oh, you don't need to worry about triggering everybody. I agree with that to an extent, but I feel like it's in a game. I just don't know that specific mental illnesses make sense. I think that more likely or not, they're going to be misrepresented. More likely than not, they are going to cause issues and it's going to take some joy away from the game. Now, I think you can do more general things. I think you could have a sim that suffers from some anxiety and some generalized depression or is gloomy. So we have gloomy already, right, in The Sims 4. I think those general emotions, because you can have anxiety and you can have depression without having a formal diagnosis of major depressive disorder. You see what I mean? So I think it's okay to have some minor symptoms like that. Not saying that anxiety or depression are minor, but things that everybody experienced, I think that's okay. I think that in Sims 3, there was actually like a neurotic trait or something. You can have things like you get more anxious around being around other Sims, so kind of like social anxiety, but just not to the extent where we are going into very specific symptoms, which could bring up some really bad memories for people and not done well. As far as something like fitness trackers, I just feel like we already have obsession, obsession rather, in our culture about tracking everything and fitness tracking and body image and body weight. And I just, this was actually something that was proposed by the Sims team for one of the community stuff packs where we could have a fitness tracker. I just think we don't need to have that level of realism. I think we already have so many things tracking us in real life. And I feel like that just doesn't really add very much to it. So those are my free categories. I know that was probably really controversial and it makes me nervous, but I feel like I want to be more outspoken now on my channel. And by the way, these are just my opinions. So if you have a completely opposite opinion, please go ahead and let me know. I am totally fine with that as long as you're respectful to me, as long as you're respectful to others, because that's what makes a game good, a community good and rich, is that we have different perspectives, we have different opinions, and we are able to share them. So on that note, I'm going to let you go. Let me know what you guys would not like to see in Sims 5, and or let me know if you'd like to do a video where I pull you guys, and we can see what you guys come up with as a whole. On that note, I will let you go, and I hope you're having a great day. Bye.